Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to this uh, to the part B of your training program. My name is uh, Professor Adiola Adinikinju. I'm the head of the Department of Economics at the Department of Economics, University of Ibadan, Ibadan in Nigeria. I will be leading the team on part two of for this course. Uh, you have completed part one, uh, where you are exposed to uh, issues around econometrics and macroeconometrics. Uh, in part two, we'll be looking at general equilibrium modeling. Uh, general equilibrium modeling are based on uh, strong microeconomic foundations. They rely on microeconomic theories, such as consumer theory, producer theory, uh, general equilibrium theory, uh, welfare theory. Uh, they also rely on economic principles, uh, like optimization, market clearing, uh, equilibrium, and so on and so forth. There are essentially three types of models that we're going to, we are going to cover uh, in this part, in part B. Uh, the first one is computable general equilibrium model, uh, or what we call CG models. The second one is dynamic stochastic general equilibrium models, or DSG models. The third one, the third type of model that we'll be looking at is called the MSG tree, or G cubed models. Uh, that, that, that's the third type of model that we are going to be looking at. Now, in, 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 this, in this part B or part two of, the, of, the, of this program, uh, there are various modules that will be that will be exposed to. Uh, so each of those uh, models that I mentioned earlier on, uh, computable general equilibrium model, a uh, dynamic stochastic general equilibrium model. MSG3 or GQ models, there are different modules under each of these models that we're going to look at. For instance, under computable general equilibrium models, uh, we're going to cover in module one, uh, introduction, uh, we're going to look at objectives of the, of the training, we're going to look at introduction to CG modeling, we're going to look at CG models, the theory, the data, and the shocks. How to how we introduce shocks uh, to CG models. In that section, uh, in that module, we're going to look at why do we use CG models? When do we use CG models? What are the strengths of CG models? What are the weaknesses of CG models? Now, in module two, we're going to look at basic theory behind CG models. Okay, what, 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 you know, the, the, the circular flow of income, the interactions among economic agents. So that is actually what we'll be looking at uh, uh, in the first part of module two. And then we'll then focus on the social accounting matrix and the put output tables. Social accounting matrix is the database that we use for CG modeling. So it is very important that you are exposed to, you know, to social accounting matrix. Then uh, we we'll then look at the various steps that you have to that we need to take in computing or in uh, developing a computable general equilibrium model. In model three, model three will be more practical because we're going to look at a typical model. I'm going to start together to construct a basic, you know, closed economic model. It's called Tega. Okay, uh, we're going to look at the, 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 um, the theoretical structure of the model, we're going to look at the corresponding social accounting matrix of the model, we're going to look at um, you know, uh, that, that structure uh, of, of, the, of the Tega model. You know. And then model four, model four, we are going to then look at the software that we use to compute computable general equilibrium models. Now, CG models are highly technical. They're highly mathematical. They are, you know, they are, you have a lot of, you know, um, what you call um, nonlinear equations. Okay, so you need specialized software that are, you know, that you can use to solve uh, such models. So the model, the software that we use, that is widely used, is not just the only one, but it's what is called GAMS. GAMS stands for 
general algebraic mathematical system, GAMS. So we're going to search, you're going to download GAMS, you're going to install it in your system, you're going to import some data into it, and then we're going to together build a, you know, a CG model, uh, you know, uh, using a GAMS, okay? And after that, we're going to run the model, uh, you know, on GAMS, and then we're going to formulate some policy scenarios, simulations that we want to carry out. Now we carry out these simulations, and then we get some results, and then we together see how you interpret results of CG models. Now, to some people, the interpretation of the results is actually one of the major, major, um, you know, expertise that you need to develop. You know, because you know the other ones are basically, you know, standard. You know, they, they are generic formulation of the model. You know, using GAMS you know, importing data into GAMS and so on and so forth. That they are basically technical things that you can learn. But when you get the results, how do you begin to interpret these results? Okay, to, you know, to, to policymakers. Okay, so that's one of the tools, one of the uh, important tools that we need to, you know, that we need to understand under the CG model. Then the second part, of this general equilibrium you know, uh, modeling is the dynamic stochastic general equilibrium model. Now, my colleague, uh, Professor Alege, is going to be taking that part of the, of, the, of the course. Now, under this dynamic stochastic general equilibrium models, we have about five models. The first model will look at the evolution of macroeconomics. What are, what are the, what is the origin? or dynamic general equilibrium models. What are the modern approaches to macroeconomic modeling? What are the basic structure, structure of a new macroeconomic model? And what are the importance of theoretical models, you know, a formulating, you know, uh, empirical models of the economy? So what is the role or what, 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 what is the role or what are the roles that theory plays in formulating empirical model for the economy. Now, the second model under dynamic stochastic general equilibrium will look at uh, the first four basic steps in business cycle phenomena. It's going to focus on business cycle phenomena. And we're going to look at the four basic steps in business cycle phenomena. We're going to look at the facts of business cycles, what are the facts of business cycles? How do you detect the business cycles? You know, the various filters that we use, you know, uh, in business cycles, uh, this, you know, uh, modeling. In model three, we now we now look at real business cycle model. What you call the RBC models. What are the assumptions of our of RBC models? You know, start fast if you are planning to develop the economy, start fast in developing economic in Nigeria. How do we derive solutions to RBC models? You know, then we look at calibration process, simulations, and results of a typical, you know, a real business cycle model. Now the next the next model under uh, dynamic stochastic equilibrium model, we look at New Keynesian DSG model, NK DSG model. Now we're going to look at the key features of the model. What are the theoretical structure of NK DSG models? How do we conduct policy shocks? And how do we interpret you know, uh, the results that you obtain? Then the final model under this uh, DSG will then look at future, the future of macroeconomic modeling. Now this is very important, okay? You know, you know, to know what, 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 you know, to look into the future and make a projection of what will be the nature, what are the kind of, you know, expectations about the future of macroeconomic modeling in Africa in particular. What are the challenges? What are the limitations? You know that you know that we needed to back overcome, you know, in macroeconomic modeling. Now, the last part of part B or part two 
is the MSG or GQ model. Now, the MSG model is about, you are looking at global models now, you know, uh, with regional uh, features. You know, MSG or GQ models talking about, global, you know, these are examples of global models. They're not just looking at country, they're not just looking at a region, you know, or group of countries, they are looking at the whole world. These are models that they develop for the entire world, you know, and they have strong features, you know, developing developed countries and so on and so forth. So under this uh, section, we're going to look at the short history of global modelings and introduction uh, to G cubed and MSG3 models. We're going to look at the features of this type of models, and we're going to look at practical demonstration uh, of, of MSG3 models using GAMS. Ladies and gentlemen, in this part, you'll be exposed to the following. These are what we were exposed to the following. One, what are the key issues in developing and use of computer generated computer models? What are the key issues? The database, how do you prepare the database for CG models? So you'll be exposed to show accounting metrics, input output tables. You're also going to be exposed, like I mentioned, to the software that we use. Okay, uh, in particular, you know, the uh, to GAMS, General Algebraic Mathematical System. You also be exposed to the theoretical and empirical structure of CG models. How do we formulate CG models in GAMS language? How do we carry out policy simulations or shocks? How do we interpret results that you obtained? We're going to look at the merits and structure of MSG3 models. We're going to look at practical demonstrations of these models. We're going to be taught how to calculate the main business cycle level. So statistics, there are some statistics that are very important that we're going to calculate. What are the theoretical basis of DSG models? The art of building DSG models and how to explain business cycle Fluctuations, you know, the the global the capitalist economy is about volatility, about fluctuations, about business cycles. Mm -hmm. So, how do you calculate the parameters of business cycles, and how do you go ahead to explain uh, business cycle fluctuations? Mm -hmm. Then we are also going to be exposed to the use of DANIA software. DANIA software is what is used to calculate CG, uh, DSG models. DANIA. Then you're going to look at how you can calibrate, you know, DSG models, how you can estimate DSG models, how you can, you can carry a simulation in DSG models, and how do you forecast, uh, do forecasting under DSG models. And hopefully we'll be able to develop your capacity, you know, uh, to interpret economic phenomena in order to come out with appropriate policy recommendations. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, what we are doing is to equip you with the skills and the expertise that you need to be able to guide policy, okay? Uh, policy should not be driven by hunches, should not be driven by ideas, should not be driven by sentiments or emotions. It should be driven by empirical analysis. Empirical analysis, you know, models that capture the entire economy and that's able to give policymakers alternative uh, scenarios and consequences of whatever decision that they make. Um, so in each of this model, you will have strong support and resources. Okay, you know, we're going to, we're not leaving you alone. Uh, so you're going to have access to the materials, okay, that we are using, um, the, the PowerPoints, you know, the, you know, for this, for this, um, uh, for this, for this, for this uh, uh, program, uh, we're going to give quizzes that will test your understanding of some of the concepts, you know, and issues that we, you know, that we, you know, that we mentioned. We're going to have practical sessions. Okay, we have assistants that will guide you in practical sessions. Now, some of these are hands-on, you know. Uh, 
uh, activities. So it's not just that you, you, you know, uh, just get a theory. We virtually want to see you being able to develop and implement these models. So there'll be practical session exercises. There'll be reference materials. We're going to give you reference materials that you can look at, okay? Uh, that will provide deeper information about the topics that you are covering. And you also have a team of lecturers uh, who would who assist you as you go on uh, in this topic. So at the end of all, the modules in part two, we expect you to have developed a very strong expertise in the following areas. Mm -hmm. To know the general principles that guide the development of general equivalent models, to be able to formulate and simulate basic general equilibrium models, to be able to interpret your results, uh, especially for policy makers. How do you engage policy makers with, what you, you know, with your results? How do you make sense out of the results that come out from your analysis? At the end of it, of this, of this, of this uh, course, this section, you should be able to construct social accounting matrix for your country. And be able to apply basic softwares and algorithms that are used in solving general equilibrium models. So we expect you to be able to demonstrate this knowledge so that you can, on your own, or in collaboration with other colleagues in this program, to build some for your country, be able to build social accounting metrics for your country, especially if you don't have it. And many African countries do not have social accounting metrics, or the ones they have, you know, may be dated, old. So you must be able, at the end of this program, be able to work with others to construct a social accounting metrics from your country, to be able to you know, develop. You know, you have some basic models. From this model, you should be able to expand these models, adapt these models, you know, um, to your countries. So that you can, you know, you can reflect the basic features of your country in those models, you know, and be able to carry out policy simulations around the development agenda of your country. Okay, your country has development agenda. You able to look at what are the implications of those development agenda, you know, on the on your economy. Finally, uh, I want to suggest that the, you know there are some organizations that you can join or subscribe to or become part of that can help you, you know, in this journey in sharpening your modeling skills. Uh, there's PEP. PEP is Partnership for Economic Policy. PEP is very strong in the areas of computing vision and core modeling. Uh, so you could, you could join them, you could access some of their materials on their website, register with them so that you can look at various applications of uh, general equilibrium models to different countries in Africa and other parts of the developing world. There's GTAP, GTAP. GTAP is Global Trade Analysis Project. It's based on the University of Purdue, okay? Now, this, uh, they, they train people on how to build not just countries' models, but global models, you know? Uh, so models that, you know, that have, uh, that incorporates all countries of the world, all regions of the world. Uh, so, so that, and they have a lot of online uh, help that, that you can use. There's also EcoMod, EcoMod network that train, that want to train and provide the uh, capacity, um, uh, build, building uh, for those who are interested in general global models. They also have their own type of global models, you know, uh, different from GTAB. Uh, that you can use to forecast, you know, uh, you know, um, you know, global-centered uh, econometrics or models, rather. Then, for those who are in Nigeria, we just last year uh, formed an association. It's called the Nigerian Association for, of Macroeconomic Modelers. Uh, this was an association that I formed with some of my colleagues uh, to be able to provide, you know, uh, guidance, you know, and support. Uh, for young economists who are interested in macroeconomic modeling. So ladies and gentlemen, the next uh, few weeks uh, together, uh, as we you know, work together on the area of general modeling, I hope 
that uh, you find it interesting, uh, you find it challenging, and I can motivate you, or we can motivate you uh, to developing greater capacities, you know, and interest in the realm of genetic role modeling that, you know, it's exciting, it's, exciting, it's challenging, but exciting. And uh, you can actually apply it to a lot of issues uh, confronting our countries. Thank you. And I hope we can take the journey together. You're welcome.